Hey Tanum guys, welcome back um, to yet another video. Today I, I actually want to do a review with you guys. So um, we're gonna watch a video and I'm gonna give commentary and my thoughts about uh, what is going on in the video. And uh, it's a little bit alarming in the way that um, Hinduism is kind of put in danger in the way that it's made fun of and it's abused directly. I mean, literally it is abused. So because of that, I feel it's important, um, especially for Hindus to kind of just realize what is going on and why we should be, you know, more active as Hindus, more integrated into uh, the principles of Hinduism and, um, and all that in order to restore that and to protect Hinduism from this uh, life negative space. So without further ado, I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashivam. So we're going to watch a video. This is a video about an ex-devotee, Sarah, you might know. Uh, she is now launching a campaign against us. And, um, and I want to um, show some bits of it for various reasons. You will see and I'll comment as it goes if I feel like, um, if I want to share something. So we're going to start. You're saying he sexually exploited you as well? Yes, or he attempted just, like empathy just one minute. Yes. Uh, it started via Facebook Messenger messages in my inbox. And the way that he started grooming me for sexual exploitation... Now the irony here is that I have never once even been looked at by Swamiji in a way that makes me feel uncomfortable, let alone spoken to, let alone touched. Swamiji has never looked at me, spoken to me, touched me, or in any other way made me feel like he is anything else other than my guru. So, so here, I just want to make a quick pause. Um, unfortunately, the video stopped. Why? There are still people who are everything uh, one made me feel like he is anything else other than my guru. So here, one quick note, yeah, she mentions Guru, okay, so I just want to pick out these few things from the video because after that I'll, I'll put the links together. So mentioning about the principle of Guru, Guru Tattwa, Guru Tattwa, which is the foundation of Hinduism. The Guru-Disciple relationship is basically the structure of Hinduism and that is why we worship and we revere, we bow down to the Guru Parampara, the lineage of Gurus which are transmitting the knowledge from ages to ages. Let's continue. So everything I said about the lifestyle of sannyas, about being Talking an initiated about disciple of His Divine Holiness, Paramahamsa Sri Nityananda, whom we call Swamiji, I really truly meant every single word of it. So here mentioning about sannyas, um, the disciple being initiated, which is also um, a very much Hindu happening. Gurus, that's what they do, right? The purpose of a guru is to initiate the disciple into a knowledge, a power or something, some spiritual truth so that the, the disciple can start to live that spiritual truth um, and imbibe that in his life. The damage done by a predatory leader who brainwashes them. There are still people fighting for Nityananda who are right now brainwashed individuals under the undue influence of this sinister cult leader. For that reason, I follow Paramahamsa Nityananda, not because somebody has convinced me to, not because somebody has told me to, not because I've been forced to, but because my own life experience is showing me the best of everything I've ever known is embodied in Paramahamsa Nityananda. So it also makes me think of other layers of gratitude. What else is there to be grateful for? Having a wonderful, beautiful family, having had such tremendously life-changing experiences in India, getting to have personally met and interacted with and been blessed by Paramahamsa Nityananda, the, the greatest guru I can imagine. So here again, mentioning about getting blessed, guru, she again refers to these Hindu things. And also one thing that shocked me initially a lot is that, um, as you can see, one of these clips is a clip that aired on TV, on national TV in India, is that uh, so somehow it seems that in India you can claim pretty much what you want on TV. 
which is not something we are used to here um, outside of India. At least I don't know. I've never seen such things happening here uh, or in the countries that I've been other than India. So it seems that, you know, you can make these big claims talking about, you know, being criminals, uh, being rapists and all that stuff live. Uh, basically making whatever form of allegation you want live on TV. So that's pretty shocking initially. But um, yeah, that's what happens. Let's continue. He claims he's above the law and he makes all of his people turn into... Your claims claiming that he's above the law. Media bullies. Now he says that all the devotees, all Swamiji's devotees are media bullies. Social media bullies and criminals. And criminals, that's a pretty big allegation. Because the reason Nityananda disciples get harassed, attacked, name called, badgered, wherever we go, the reason we get attacked like this is because the media have published so many lies about Swamiji. And Arti Rao, everyone should know her name. She was his first public whistleblower and rape victim. To the fake rape victim who claims she was raped at a time when she wasn't even in the country where she claims the rape took place. Who has pressed charges of rape back in 2010. From the morphed video that was published by the now defunct Sun TV back in 2010. In the past when people have commented on my videos back when I was still brainwashed by that cult. These people are committing... So again here uh, bringing this idea of cults. So I'll put up the links of everything it's together criminal again. Criminal actions. Well, criminal false actions. Charges, <clears throat> false rape cases against people because Nityananda tells them to and they believe in his impunity. He claims he's above the law and he makes all of his people turn into media bullies, social media bullies and criminals. Now the irony here, I follow Paramahamsa Nityananda, not because somebody has convinced me to, not because somebody has told me to, not because I've been forced to. The average general public who are not properly educated in discerning truth versus lie in the media, who don't have media literacy. They hear all of this and they assume our guru is something which he is not. If you have any questions about any of this or the life I lived with Paramahamsa Nityananda while I was there in Nityananda Pitam Bengaluru Adinam, I'm ready to answer all of those. I might seem annoyed or upset sometimes when people question me by saying things like, don't you know your guru was a cheat? Or why don't you come out and admit that you were abused? I get annoyed because he's not a cheat and I wasn't abused. I had a great experience. When I felt it was time to move on, he blessed me to move on. And now I'm having a continued great experience. So yeah, here we have a claim. She was saying that she was told an incident where gurukuls were abused. You have a timeline of all the statements made at different periods of time to basically highlight the inconsistency of the whole thing. And basically, this is the end of the video. Yeah. So basically, that's the video. Um, so the first thing obviously that we can see in this video is the inconsistency of the approach but what 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 kind of scares me more than the inconsistency i mean that's a personal thing right whether an individual is integrated or not or consistent or not that's one thing um that can give us you know the capacity to discern whether this person should be taking in consideration or not taking in consideration believed or not believed uh, but um but the thing is that so many of the foundational uh, principles of Hinduism have been mentioned in this and what I feel is that 
if you if you see this kind of inconsistency in someone and that person uses these kinds of terminology chances are we will also start to abuse the ideology uh, which is very dangerous because that is basically Hinduism um, Hinduism that's that's how that is the foundation of Hinduism Hinduism is not a cult um, it is a culture but uh, somehow these people are presenting it as a you know they start they dissociate they they put everything to pieces and they start to judge each of these pieces distracting our attention but when you realize that the more you accept their judgments about these pieces they're tearing apart Hinduism and that's the, basically the plan to get rid of the whole traditions uh, the whole lineages uh, which is uh, the Hinduism is like it's a, it's a it's a huge amount of different traditions and lineages which are sharing um, truth revealed by Paramashiva in the scriptures and they kind of take everything apart one by one and they kind of decimate one by one each of these things and next thing you know you don't have anything left so that's very scary and I feel that uh, people who don't understand Hinduism people who don't you know desire to experience the depth express and experience the depth of Hinduism and they get you know they see this kind of stuff um, it's dangerous. They will come to their own conclusions and they're not really interested, but if they can, you know, they, 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 will, they will put their own judgments and, and, and support the destruction of the whole thing. But we need to realize that this is Hinduism, right? Uh, these are the core, some of the core principles of Hinduism. If you make fun of these principles because you see somebody using these words or these principles left and right and swinging, swindling everybody around just by changing speech or changing um, uh, declarations or uh, the way she presents herself to everybody. If people start to do that and using the principles, the next thing you know, our principles will be considered foolish. And, and that is basically a very nice way to dismantle Hinduism without people realize, realizing that it's being dismantled. And that's very scary. So, I mean, we Hindus have to stand and we have to stand by these principles and we need to show people that, I mean, you cannot just simply use the words, right? We have to live them. We have to be integrated. We can't say, oh, I'm like this and then I'm like that and then you just swindle yourself around. The principle of integrity has to be cognized and internalized and lived um, in order to experience the depth of these spiritual truths. So that's, I think, is something that is scary and... Um, I don't know, you guys leave your comments below what you think in terms of Hinduism or as Hindus. Uh, what is, are you seeing any form of danger? Do you have any questions? Um, and um, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to see what kind of, uh, how you guys are perceiving or experiencing this whole thing. And, uh, and yeah, so we have to, we have to stand. We have to stand united because one of the things is that Hinduism is like um, each lineage or each tradition is they're, they're, in, they're in oneness with each other, but they don't necessarily engage with each other. So it's easy for people who would have other interests um, to just start to dismantle one by one each of these lineages and traditions. And then before you know, weaken the whole Hinduism. And that's what they do. You know, one guru at a time, you take them down, take them down, take them down. And then, yeah, next thing you know, there's no more transmission of knowledge, no more initiation uh, and the feeling connection with the, and the guru-disciple relationship becomes impossible to experience because there's nobody who is, uh, there's no gurus. And uh, like that, the whole thing collapses. And that would be, that would be, I, 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 Swamiji said it and I truly believe it and it makes total sense also. It would be the end of humanity in the way that the kind of, the way we are evolving now the only principles which would satisfy what we seek are basically the principles of Hinduism. We are not, we don't want to be told what to do. We don't want to follow something just for the sake of following. And, you know, we all seek individual creative expression, that individuality and all that. That's why Hindu, individuality, <laughs> hashtag. Um, and, um, and yeah, and Hinduism does that. Hinduism does not, it's not one book that you follow. There's 20 million scriptures. And each one of them are, not each one of them, but they all talk about different paths to experience the self, to experience Paramashivoham. 
And you know, some of us will relate to this, some of us will relate to that, depending on the biomemory that we took when we decided to take the body. And they all lead to the same place. And Hindus are able to believe in different gods, for instance, yet still uh, be in oneness with each other and not experience conflict, which is not something you see outside of that, uh, outside of Hinduism. You know, if I believe in one God and you don't believe in my God, then I feel threatened because you don't believe my God is ultimate. And then, you know, I discard you from existence to prove that my God is ultimate. That kind of mentality is old and it no longer fits uh, what we want. Hinduism does not do that. You can believe, you can engage, have devotion uh, towards your guru and towards your Ishta Devata and not be threatened by somebody who is worshipping another guru or another Ishta Devata. And, and that is amazing. That shows that they, the Hinduism has grasped and is transmitting the essence of spirituality, the essence of superconsciousness. So yes, that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. Put a comment below your thoughts and uh, like, subscribe, thanking you all for watching. Again, uh, helping the channel to grow and to share these, um, these experiences and uh, this Hindu knowledge to the world. And um, helping to, to make Hinduism one again as a united force which is working towards uh, re-establishing Dharma on the planet Earth. So with this, I'll see you guys in the next video. Nityananda. I welcome you all with my love and respect. Let you all open all your three eyes. Om Nityananda.